Hello everyone. So today we're going to have a look at junior cert higher level, crossing into leaving cert ordinary and higher level, the functions that you're going to need on your calculator. Again, there's lots of functions, there's more than that I'm going to be mentioning here, but these are the basic ones I can think that'll get you by. The first one obviously is um, functions, how to manipulate functions. So we're going to use our function button here, f of x. Now, it gives you options. The ones that you'd particularly be using is define f of x and just f of x. So if I go down to define f of x, it allows me to input any x value. So I'm going to use, let's say, x squared plus 3x plus 5. Okay? So there you have it there. So all of the press is execute and it's saved. Now, if I go back into the functions, I can actually go into the top one now, the f of x, and allow me to find any value. So I can put in 8, and it'll give me the answer. Okay? I can put in 10, and it'll put the, give me the answer. So this might be handy for some people. Okay? So that's your basic function for just using it as a function. If you want to use it as... Um, to create a table, well then just go to your home and go into your table. Now, it's actually going to be already in there. That's the really cool thing. So if you've already inputted a function, it's already in there. So these are empty and you think, why are they empty? Well, that's because you have to give it some guidance. So if you go to the three dots, it'll ask you for the range. And let's say we go from zero to 10. And we go up in one steps. So in other words, we're only going to go once on the number line or on the graph, okay? So, step one, execute. And there you have it, okay? It's done for you. Simple as that. So there's your corresponding, your X value you put in, the Y value that came out. The X value went in, the Y came out. And you can just plot those points as normal, okay? So... When you go back and look at your function, it's still there in your function, the original one. Now, let's say you don't do this way. How can you do it another way? So I'm going to turn off the computer so it forgets everything. I'm going to turn it on again, and I'm going to show you how you can just go straight into table and do it. So let's go straight into table. This time it comes up that there's no function. So go into tools, and now you can go to the second one and define the function. Same method, x squared plus 3x plus 5. And once you've done that, go back in here, go to your range, start at 0, end at 10, go up in ones, execute, and there you have it, you're back again. Okay, so that's how you do your basic one. That'll work for any function you do. Okay, so go back to home, go back to calculate, because remember, calculate is our default okay so that should give you a kind of a, a nice starting point for want of a better word now the next one i'm going to show you is something from the math box and that's how to do a number line okay so number lines can be quite handy especially at junior cert higher level but how you put in a number line can be sometimes a bit tricky and obviously your old calculators will not know how to do this but the new ones obviously do. Okay, so we're going to try and put in a number line. So I'm going to write the number line on the side so you can see what I'm going to be putting in. The number line I'm going to try and put in is, I'll just get a different color here so everyone can see it. It's going to be, um, let's say, x greater than or equal to minus a half and greater than minus two. So I'm going to see, can I put that one in? Now, obviously, it'd be easier if I turn them into decimal numbers because we're doing my calculators. So, so just so you see, that's what I'm going to pop in. I'm going to put in that number line. So you can see this is a mixed operator number line. This one has a less than or equal to, and this is a less than. Okay, so it'll be interesting to see how the calculator deals with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the math box. Let's so go into home, go into math box, and go into number line. Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit tricky. It's looking for A, B, C, and execute. Okay, um, so in order to put D 
the A in, let's assume the A is the, the top end number, this the one on the right hand side. So I'm just going to press it and it's giving me which option. Okay, so I'm going to use the second option. And now I need to give it the value of A. So I'm going to give it minus a half, minus 0.5. Okay, and I'm going to confirm that. Now I need the B option, which is obviously going to be at the lower end. And as I see at my lower end, I've let I've it's a great X is greater than. Okay, so I'm going to press it. Okay, X is greater than, and I'm going to put in minus two. Hope I've done that right. And then it's looking for a C. So. C then is going to be left blank. We can leave this one blank. Okay. And let's execute. So there you have your number line. Okay. So if X is less than minus five, minus one and a half, you can see it starts there and goes in that direction because it's solid. Solid dot represents including minus a half and then I think I can cycle to B there's B greater than or equal to minus two there's a circle dot around minus two and it's going in that direction so there you have it and at the bottom you have your generic number line okay and you can move along it to see it so um, if you want to do it as a composite if you want to do it as a composite Okay, let me have a, a show uh, of how to do that. So I'm going to go into home, map box, number line. And this time I'm just going to do the C one. Okay, so let's do the same thing again, but just on the C one. So less than or equal to A and minus 0.5. And... They can go back in here. No, I thought let me. So um maybe it'll let me. No, I thought let me. It'll have to go back and edit it. Okay. New one. There we go. These are the ones I want. So I want the less than or equal to and greater than. That's that one there. Okay. So the A is going to be the lower one. It's going to be minus two. And B is going to be minus a half. Execute. And there you have it. That's the number line drawn for you. Between minus a half and minus two. Including minus a half, not including two. So... Hope that helps you there. So that's how you do a number line. All right, so after the number line, you're kind of jumping in then to using kind of some of the more advanced kind of leave inserty stuff. So I just go through a couple of advanced leave inserty stuff just to help people. And um, the main one I'm going to show you is um, the unit circle, which is nicely done on this. So a unit circle can be a handy little thing to do. Um, so again, go into the math box, press the circle. Now type of unit circle, and then you've got all these little funny little things here. Um, so if you want to select a unit circle, you obviously go straight here, okay? So let's put in, um, let's put in 45 degrees. And that's been 135 degrees because I know both of them are um, the same. So let's execute that and let's see what happens. So there you have, they give you the tan, they give you the cosine and give you the tan of the reference angle and there they show you the other angle. Okay, so which is pretty cool. Okay, which is pretty cool. So it gives you the two reference angles, what it is in sine, what it is in cosine and what it is in tan. Okay, so that might help some of you leave insert if you need to do some things very quickly. 
Um, the last one I'm going to show the leave insert ones is um, probably the, the one that you might use the most, especially at higher level, and that is um, how to convert from complex into a rectangular into polar and polar into complex. Okay, so that might be very ha handy to some of you. So, come back to calculate. Okay, so we're going to go into our little catalog. One to one. Sorry, now. We're going to go into catalog. Okay, and we're going to go down to angle. Okay, and here we have it at the bottom. Rectangular to polar, or polar to rectangular. So we'll go rectangular to polar first of all. Okay. So we're going to put in, let's say, put root 2, root 2. Now, obviously, you won't know what this means unless you have, unless you've actually, you know, done this in class. So, you know, don't worry if you haven't done this in class. Um, this, will, you, this will be useful. In order to put a comma, you have to use the shift Okay, and then put another root two. Close the bracket. Okay, so you pop that in, and let's see what it gives you. It gives you a radius of two and an angle of 45 degrees. So there you have it, you've converted one into the other. Okay, now, to convert polar back, you just do the reverse. Okay, so, Convert polar back, that's in root two. Forty-five. And there you have the coordinates, one and one. Okay? One up, one down. That'll give you a uh, an X and Y of root two. Oh, you know, so there you have it. That's how it works. Okay, hope that helps you. That's more advanced. There is a lot more features on it, but they will be everything that, that will keep you going. Now, one last thing, just again for the higher levels uh, and for um, ordinary level at leave insert, um, you are going to have to know how to do the factorial stuff. So I'm going to show you that. So again, it's not too hard, but again, if you, if you haven't come across this yet, don't worry about it. So if I want to do um, five factorial, Okay, so all I have to do is five, and then I have to go into my little you go in there, probability, and there you go. And the same for permutations and combinations go in through that same route.